evening. Good evening and welcome to the East Brandywine Township Board of Supervisors regular session meeting for Thursday, July 18, 2019, 7.30 p.m. A re reminder, a recording device will be used during this meeting and we're going to open the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Okay, I'm going to open up the oh. meeting tonight with public comments on non-agenda items. And just a reminder, rules of conduct for public meetings established by Resolution 2108, the time allotted to each individual making a comment shall be three minutes unless otherwise set by the presiding officer. Additional public comment may be granted at the discretion of the presiding officer at the conclusion of the meeting. Any public comment on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we're going to move on to the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, so actually, we don't have those yet, so we're going to move on to our treasurer's report. Thank you. Bank account balances as of July 18, 2019 are as follows. General fund checking, $1,994,937.37. General fund investment, $912,558.39. State fund bank accounts, $366,444.98. Referendum open space, $2,675,262.41. Open space, $793,092.04 ,094 and traffic impact, $1,632,224.98. And there are a total of 93 checks in need of approval for the general fund, one for the police capital reserve fund, six for the state fund, and three for the open space fund. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a minute and go over the finances to make sure that they're in order. Make a motion. We approve the disbursements as requested. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to um, um, to Scott for the township manager's report. Uh, thank you. Uh, as everybody knows, we're currently experiencing significant hot weather. Um, past three days, and it's uh, forecast to continue through this weekend. Um, temperatures that we haven't seen for many years in this uh, area and across the country. Uh, earlier this week, the county, uh, Chester County put in their code red procedures uh, to offer recommendations for uh, keeping cool uh, during this extended weather event. Uh, places like the Exton Square Mall, public libraries, our municipal building, um, during the, the hottest times of the day, which is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, and certainly uh, the, the extended heat can lead to uh, illnesses from general fatigue to life-threatening uh, illnesses because our bodies are uh, having difficulty coping with the, uh, the temperatures and uh, regulating body temperature is the big issue. Uh, we're asking residents to uh, check on their neighbors, especially if they have uh, elderly or homebound neighbors, those that are very have very young children. Uh, they're most vulnerable to these uh, heat-related related stressors. Um, and again, cool locations such as our municipal building, public libraries, Exton Square Mall uh, are good places to go to avoid the midday heat. 
Um, there's more information on our uh, website and Facebook pages on um, ways to keep cool during this time. Uh, construction on the uh, sewer and water line extensions for the Maple View project began on July the 8th, and they're proceeding along Bollinger Road, the sewer line is. Uh, utility installation is part of the Horseshoe Pike Bollinger Road intersection improvement project. Uh, the construction of the stormwater facilities will occur first once all of the components are on site. That's why none of, the, uh, none of that work has started yet. Uh, I'm assured by uh, Alan Myers' um, representatives that they will have the construction completed of the, um, the widening turn lanes, um, et cetera, on Horseshoe Pike, Bollinger Road, and the New Street, Warren Lane in the Maple View development that will all be done prior to the end of summer. Uh, installation of the traffic signal equipment is anticipated to occur uh, late September or um, early October of this year once the poles and mast arms are delivered, as I said uh, last month, uh, that's uh, been delayed because of flooding in Nebraska where the, uh, uh, those items are constructed. Uh, this morning, Brandywine Conservancy and Natural Lands Trust provided a seminar. Uh, to several uh, staff members. Supervisor Fisher was uh, also in attendance on green stormwater infrastructure, uh, which offers some new and innovative ways to uh, not only manage our stormwater, but restore the quality of our water resources. Uh, cons the Conservancy and Natural Lands Trust joined forces um, and obtained a William Penn Foundation grant of uh, actually $35 million to uh, look at this, these issues on a region-wide basis. Um, the, uh, the Conservancy did a very basic review or has done a basic review of our existing subdivision zoning and stormwater management ordinances. Uh, they indicated the township's in pretty good shape. Uh, but they've identified some areas where they feel some improvements could be made, uh, particularly related to land development planning. Uh, technical assistance is being offered by the Conservancy and NLT for more in-depth review of our ordinances, language to strengthen a connection between these regulations as well as offering uh, land development plan reviews. Uh, one of the things that was interesting to me was that the Conservancy is also planning to offer technical assistance to homeowners associations about how to properly maintain their uh, open space, uh, which also helps manage stormwater, uh, as well as similar assistance to our property owners uh, on the operation and maintenance of their on-site stormwater management facilities. Uh, we'll be including information on um, in a future mile marker on these programs um, because this is all being offered to us at no cost because of the uh, William Penn Foundation grant. And I have in the packet I have uh, for uh, Chairman Scribner and Supervisor Winters the information from this morning's meeting. And I would just note, because as Scott said, I did attend as well as uh, a couple of our commission members. Th there were some corrections made when we got into the discussion. So if you look at this document, and it says opportunities, which are the things they would work on, landscape plan, submittal requirements are not included, the saldo. We pointed out to them that they are. They looked at only the preliminary plan requirements, not the final plan requirements. So that was unexpected on their part that we actually did include it, but didn't include it at preliminary. And then it says um, improved street, residential street design ordinances, reduced street width. She actually said no, that our state, when they looked at our street width requirements, they were satisfied with them. So that, that is sort of off the table. but. I think it's a significant opportunity for us at no cost um, to get some fine tuning done. And um, as you gentlemen know, the stormwater management is becoming an mm -hmm. increasing issue. So um, 
they have a lot of ideas about how to uh, not only make sure that that uh, some things are implemented, the best uh, management practices are implemented, but that um, we we stay on top of of the maintenance of these where they appear in um, some of the communities, some of the developments. So, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Luke, for the Assistant Township Manager's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, this time of year is busy with activities in the park. Um, start my report with three upcoming events before we meet again. Uh, first up, um, there's a movie on July 20th. That's in two days. Um, it, in the heat, it will be appropriate. It is Christmas in July. The movie will feature The Grinch. Um, on August 9th, we have our final free uh, family-friendly movie in the park, and that is Wonder Park. That's the name of the movie. Um, both of the movies are free. Popcorn is provided, and they begin just as soon as it's dark for the projector to show something on the screen. So we advertise those at dusk. On August 17th is the Community Day in the park. Uh, this is a, a venerable event. We've been doing this for many years, but there's a couple changes this year I'd like to highlight. Um, this year there will be four to five free bounce houses. Uh, the kids zone will be free um, this year and not a separate ticket to enter. Looking forward to that. Um, and uh, that event begins at 11 a.m. on Saturday, August the 17th. I hope to see everyone there. Um, before Community Day begins, we actually have our sixth annual Run for the Parks fundraiser. Uh, this event's raised about $35,000 for improvements in the park, and it's also a lot of fun. Uh, registration's open, and registration information can be found on the Township's website, or on Facebook, or on the Race Menu website. The first event, the Kids 1K, begins at, at 8.30 a.m., and the main event begins at 9 a.m. Um, Staff has been working to uh, uh, come up with a proposal for a, 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 a town hall meeting um, between the Board of Supervisors and area businesses. And I sent a proposal to the Board on Friday and I've made some amendments to my original proposal based on feedback I've received since. Uh, this evening I'm looking for a go ahead from uh, the Board to book the room, print the invitations, order the food, and advertise the meeting. Um, uh, what is included in, um, in your packet right now is an amended postcard. Um, what was in my packet on Friday was a blurb for the, uh, the um, fall mile marker newsletter and a mailing list for this postcard. So um, can we book this day? Do we have a date? Okay. I'm fine with it. All right, it's official. It's official, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you for your consideration on that. I have a, a quick update on the contract for trail extension and repairs to the trails in the community park. At this board's regular session on May 16th, the board authorized staff to advertise a contract uh, to make these improvements in the park. Um, uh, the, the, the largest portion of this contract would be the construction of a new trail segment from the south and west corner of phase two in the community park to an existing trail stub out built um, on HOA land in the Hopewell development um, on the Ferndale cul-de-sac. Um, this would cross land that the township acquired in fee using open space funds from uh, uh, Leslie Winters and David Permy. Um, you may also recall that late last year the township received $10,000 in funding from the Pico Green Region grant to help support this project. Uh, my update this evening is that the bid will now be advertised twice, once on July 30th and once on August 2nd. The bids will be opened on August 13th, and staff anticipates making a recommendation to the board regarding the issuance of a contract at your August regular session, which is August 15th. Uh, my thanks to in Township Engineer Nate Klein for his diligent work on the project. And then lastly this evening, um, uh, the, typically this time of year, um, I am uh, bothering the board to, to make a motion to appoint um, uh, a budget committee for the coming year because uh, budget time is rapidly approaching. Uh, in this case, uh, the Board of Supervisors made its recommendations about the 2020 budget committee at your annual organization meeting in January. In the next few days, staff will be soliciting uh, dates and times for the first budget committee meeting of the 2020 cycle. So just a heads up on that one. Thank you. Thank you. 
building inspectors report <clears throat> for June 19th a total of 16 building permits were issued three zoning permits uh, use and occupancy permits issued were 27 186 inspections were completed there are 24 failed inspections during that the uh, June period total fees collected for the month 9,911.50 is respectfully submitted Naran King building and Code Secretary. Okay, thank you. And the Roadmaster Report, Matt. Thank you. Uh, during the week of June 24th, the Township Road Department replaced a corrugated metal pipe, uh, which is a cross pipe on East Fisherville Road, just east of the bridge, which is closed in Cowan Township. Um, there are many CMPs, corrugated metal pipes in the township, which are failing. Generally, the bottom rusts, and eventually the soil surrounding the pipe collapses, uh, causing sinkholes. Um, we removed the existing corrugated metal pipe and installed two DWN walls and approximately 30 feet of 24-inch reinforced concrete pipe. The project took four days to complete using township labor. Uh, the ma materials costs were, uh, including tree removal, was uh, 5,937. And I've enclosed a uh, couple of photos during construction and a photo of the corrugated metal pipe that was removed. And I'd like to thank the residents that live west of the work for their patience during the temporary closure. Um, on Thursday, July 11th, bids were opening for, were open for our 2019 road paving project. The bid is for mill and overlay of Hopewell Road from Rock Raymond to Creek Road, Zinn Road from East Reeseville Road to Hadfield Road, and the entire length of East Fisherville Road. Uh, we received two bids, the first from MECO Constructors for $67,444, and the second from RoadCon for $597,142. Uh, Mr. Kyle Turner of Cedarville Engineering recommends accepting the bid from MECO, and I respectfully request that you accept the bid from MECO Construction Constructors Incorporated for $467,444 for the 2019 road paving project. Um, before we do the motion, Matt, just out of curiosity, is is that normal for us only to get two bids? I know it's put out there public, but uh, is that, are we usually getting more than that? Um, um, it, it varies from year to year. Um, I think a lot of the contractors, because of the extreme wet weather last year, in fact, I've talked to one of them, and uh, they've got projects left over from last year that they weren't even able, they weren't able to complete. But, uh, I think in, on one other time we've gotten two, but normally we get three or four bids. And what is this in relation to the prices we were getting last year per square yard? Uh, the price from MECO is uh, less, quite a bit less. Than what we were paying last year? Correct. Okay. And Rocon did our paving project last year. Okay, good. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the bid from Meco Constructor Inc. in the amount of $467,444 for the uh, 2019 road paving project. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go on to the uh, police chief now for the police department report. Good evening. The report for June 2019. Um, one quick note on Wednesday night, July 31st, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., we're going to be having a joint effort with the fire company, and it's going to be called Pizza with Public Safety. And Pizza Mia is going to be supplying pizza for the kids and the parents. Anyone who wishes to stop down at the fire company is uh, more than welcome to join us. You are all invited if you'd like to come down. Um, and uh, it's more of a just a public gathering and yeah. meet and greet type thing to replace our Joe with 5 0 uh, for this month. Uh, for the month of June, we had 2,248 recorded incidents. 
We conducted 220 investigations. We had seven criminal arrests, six summary arrests, one warrant arrest. We completed one juvenile petition. There were five traffic accidents. 215 traffic citations were issued. 53 traffic warnings were issued. And officers logged 10,032 miles of patrol. Uh, training completed for the month. The lieutenant and I attended a uh, Department of Justice and uh, a uh, Pennsylvania uh, Commission on Crime and Delinquency training on body-worn cameras. Um, if I could just give you a quick update. Uh, as I had mentioned to you, I think it was in February, we had applied for a federal grant to um, purchase and implement a body-worn camera program. Uh, at the time, we were awarded $5,000, and that has since been increased to $13,500. Um, so the training that we attended was to prepare us to complete all the paperwork, get our policies into place, and on how to manage that program once we implement it. The game plan right now is after we go through our reaccreditation in September, we will be purchasing the body-worn cameras, and we will be uh, putting each officer through training on the cameras, and these complement the in-car mobile video cameras that we already have. So it's gonna expand our transparency of everything that we do, and um, we hope that uh, we'll have that implemented before, I would think, the end of October. So all of our guys will be equipped by that time. Great, thank you. Um, you have copies of the monthly investigations, the Office of Activity Report. I also have a year-to-date uh, activity report, and I'd also like to just note, every once in a while you'll ask me how busy we are. Um, we have already exceeded the total number of arrests that we made last year. We have already exceeded it six months into the year. So the answer is yes, we are very busy. That's all I have. Thank you. East Brandywine Fire Company report. Okay, East Brandywine Fire Company report for June 2019. We had 75 total incidents for the month, 29 fire, 46 medical. In East Brandywine Township, we had 11 fire calls and we had 20 medical calls. We had an average of 12 personnel responding to each fire call. We had four training sessions with an average of 27 personnel at all four training sessions. Um, things to note about the fire company. We had a significant EMS call on Windermere Court the other night where without the quick response of the QRS unit from East Brandywine Fire Company, a 47-year-old resident most likely would have lost his life. The fire company got there. The patient had been stung by multiple bees and was in an anaphylactic shock. If it weren't for the quick work of the QRS delivering an EpiPen upon their arrival, uh, the outcome probably would not have been a good. Uh, that was uh, kudos to the guys that were on that day. The fire company took part in downtown's Good Neighbor Day with our QRS and our ladder truck standing by. Uh, the fire company has become what they call RIT certified, Rapid Intervention Team certified. We're now able to go anywhere that the county deems to a fire and stand by in case a fireman were to become trapped. Only a certain amount of companies in the county have that designation. We're happy to report that engine 491 is back in service. That's our rescue engine with all the rescue tools on it. Uh, the fire company, you'll note we had one injury. We were dispatched to a two alarm house fire in Cowan Township with 26 members uh, responding to the call. And one of our members uh, became dehydrated and um, had to be transported to the hospital for further care. Um, the other thing I want to bring up to you guys, I know I talked about it last month a little bit, and I went back and I wanted to take a, a more definitive look at it. And I talked to you about a gear issue with the amount of volunteer firemen that we have in attendance and the guys coming in. And the gear issue is definitely, definitely an, a problem for us. We right now share gear between daytime guys and evening guys. We share gear with people who are away at college and not able to respond. We share gear with uh, people who go on vacation. Um, we just had two more members walk in this Wednesday, I'm sorry, last Wednesday, who are trained in, as firefighters. And we're kind of at a wit's end and looking for some help. Um, 
I had one of the gentlemen asked me how much money we actually needed, and I had said fifty thousand dollars. It's not as bad as that. <laughs> it's more. It's more ten ten complete outfits of gear: coats, pants, boots, helmet, gloves, hoods. Um, all come to about forty two hundred apiece, and even our frontline guys have torn gear, and it would be like the equivalent of a police officer with a bulletproof vest with holes in it. Um, we can't go buy a pair of pants, and we can't go buy a shirt and have them hemmed and tailored to fit, and it takes three months. So I don't know if you guys um, have any suggestions for us. We applied for a grant. The problem with the grant was is that not all of our gear is 10 years and older, which Mr. Pierce will, will attest to the fact that you can't have gear that's 10 years and older because you can't send the guys to fire school with that. Um, so we're really we're really torn. We don't we don't have the funds to outfit the guys appropriately right now, and I'm just looking for some avenues of help. Um, so so first, um, obviously my mindset is we don't want to turn anybody down who's willing to help us out in the volunteer fire department um the second part of i guess we're you know i was going to ask you tonight uh i i've seen uh the advertising on the route 30 bypass and i'm assuming that that's helping you guys with getting more volunteers because it's showing the big <laughs> Chester County took a big initiative and they have a huge grant to recruit volunteer fighter, firefighters for the county. Um, that has stimulated some interest, but I have to tell you that even without the grant, our doors have been being knocked down, which is just tremendous for us. The uh, influx of people into the community that are moving from other areas that are trained has been phenomenal for us. Um, so while this initiative's helped from the county, they also haven't, um, kind of helped on the back end of that either you know their their uh, focus is on recruitment to get them in the door and then what you do with them is up to your fire company up to your fire company um I, we do have on the agenda a discussion uh, supervisor winters is going to tell us about the discussions with uh, west brandywine township and i think um we would um, what i think should happen is we should get some a specific request from you with the amount that you need the number you told us now it's forty two hundred dollars per man the number of mm -hmm. uh, sets of equipment that you need and then we should include that in the discussion with west brandywine township to see if we can come up with a basis to provide that what um luke uh, or scott if we needed to act on something quickly Where would where would we where would we go? I'm not saying tonight. Well, I'm saying. <laughs> well, you'd have, they'd have to look at the budget. <coughs> to find at out, the budget. Yeah. Find out where may, there may be areas where we're behind the budget in terms of spending, and we could free up some funds. But it, we we um, just off the top of my head, without having reviewed our budget, I recall that the the, fig the figure that we uh, included in our budget as adopted in December of, of 2018 was more than the figure that was in the multi-municipal interim agreement between the three municipalities. So in other words, what we've been distributing to the fire company is uh, at the, per the multi-municipal interim agreement that we had uh, would be less than the budgeted amount. So from a budget perspective, possible. I need to take a look. Let me just yeah, I, get some prices put on next month's agenda. Yeah, I, I think come here and sooner rather than later was what I was thinking. But I mean, I you know I I recollect we had a discussion with Bondsville Mill over over money, and it was right around budget time. And my thought process was, give it to you now, but it, we. We may not have as much, you know, to to, to float above next year. But regardless, uh, it sounds like this is an immediate uh, issue. So let's put uh, Mary, if you don't mind, if you could put um, if you could put this uh, as a agenda item for the, um, I guess the next. Well, I was going to respond to Mr. Fisher a minute. Um, I think I sh uh, we could put a proposal together with all the prices. I particularly wouldn't 
be opposed to coming to you the, the morning work session and presenting that. That way we're not waiting the whole month to come back again. Um, you can have the figures in front of you um, so you can see exactly what we're looking at. And then if that, you guys can give us some direction. Yep. Again, I'm not asking, you know, to act on it tonight, but it really is. We're in, we're, we don't have any black helmets, which to put that in perspective, the helmets are for senior firefighters who go inside and fight the fire while, like you watched on that. Well, we don't have any helmets to distribute, and they're about 250, 300 apiece. Um, we don't have any frontline gear to give the people to go fight the fire right now. So that, that's the kind of I'm up against. But I would rather if I came with a written proposal to you, but at least you guys are yeah. aware that that's what we're doing. And then just another thought while we're, we're discussing this, two things. One, Luke, would you mind putting this on the website to say that we are, uh, you know, met our, met our uh, limits with uh, gear for the fire department, any and all um, uh, donations would be appreciated and put that on the website. The second thing is, do we meet our mile marker um, quota time? So Actually, I, 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 underway. The I think it's a, the answer to your question is I think we could still get it in the mile marker for the next let's, issue. Let's try and do that as well because again um, that can be something that is either a could be reimbursed to the township if we have already divvied it out or b we can figure it out once once we get to that. With with the Luke, do you handle the mile mile marker? Uh, that is a that's a team effort. Um, Basically, the editor Diane Sweeney makes a, a solicitation to, to department heads and committee chairs. So why don't the why doesn't the fire company compose an article yeah. so that way you'll have a little bit better understanding of instead of third hand writing it, and I'll give it to Luke to peruse and put in. And I would appreciate it uh, if you would put on there the link to your video because I was at a party this weekend and and people were actually watching that at the party talking about <laughs> that that was from our township. So it's uh, pretty impressive. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're going to go uh, to old business permission to advertise the curbside municipal waste recycling collection RFP. Luke. Yeah, this would be the, um, the fourth thing that we've either advertised or, or bought of, of significant value this summer. Um, in front of you is um, my first draft, and I will say for the record that it has not been reviewed by either Scott or Tom, two, two minds whose opinion I value a great deal um, because it's hot off the press, but uh, it is a, uh, an RFP for um, trash and recycle services. Uh, the second class township code requires that, that municipalities bid out this service at least every five years. Um, um, our previous contract was a three-year with two optional one-year extensions, which was awarded to Republic Services. That contract expires at the end of this year, December 31st, 2019. Um, this RFP is slightly different than our previous ones. I'm going to just kind of hit the highlights. Um, first and foremost, it is no longer um, um, making the possession and responsibility for processing fees for recyclables on the hauler. Um, the township would pay a tipping fee similar to a tipping fee associated with um, uh, the um, with solid waste as it goes to the landfill. And and just a, a little background on, on on why I feel that is preferable is the last time we bid this out, recycle markets were very strong. This time we're bidding it out, recycle markets are very weak. So we were able to lock in a contract um, based on strong recycle markets that have since gone away. So I'm visualizing this being a variable rate that's, that, so if, if plastics and steel and copper and the like go up, then, then our tipping fees go down. So um, that's the, the major change. Uh, and also this bid um, offers a option uh, for the purchase and uh, assembly and delivery of um, trash carts. And I have um, done what is, uh, you know, some will say it's a no-no in an RFP. I've specified a particular make and model of cart. I've done so because we've already been invested in the toter brand in the form of our recycle carts. And so all of the equipment we use to maintain that um, is already in hand. The, the, we actually can't use 
lids and wheels and, um, and axles across them because the recycle carts are grant funded and the trash ones will be a, 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 a purchase from the general fund. Um, but uh, it, it's still very useful to have just one model of cart. So um, I, I, I don't know what to expect. The last time we bid this out, we got four offers. Um, uh, we, we got bids from uh, J.P. Mascaro, Republic Services, Eagle Disposal, and A.J. Blazinski. In an effort to ensure that uh, we get as many bids as possible, this one has a longer period between advertising and closing than previous bids. We should know, we should be in, or staff should be in a position to recommend um, a hauler by your September regular session. Okay, uh, just two quick uh, things. The, fir the first thing is, um, the trash cans. I know our provider has started dropping off trash cans to a, a, a large area of East Brandywine. Is that, is that for convenience for them? Or, uh, and when, when I say, um, what I'm, where I'm going with this is when you're gonna bid these out, they, for instance, my house, they just dropped one off about a month ago and it looks like it's brand new, if not uh, under a year old. Mm -hmm. So they're doing that because I think it's easier for them um, and I've noticed it through more and more houses going through the township that have those now. So, um, the, that that particular service where they are providing a Republic branded 96 gallon cart for solid waste for your trash is not <coughs> anticipated in any way in our current contract. Um, there's two ways to look at it. One, out of the generosity of their own hearts, they want to provide carts for people to use. A more cynical view would be that they want as much of the township to be automation ready as, a, as possible, where they That's would go I through think. with the hydraulic arms right. and can just flip it. Because I don't see them doing it any other way anymore. I see them going with the arm now. Because we didn't solicit that, and because that's a relationship between our current hauler and the residents, I can't tell you what will happen on January 1st with your new cart. If Republic doesn't win the bid, they may take that back. But I, I, I don't know what their reaction would be under those circumstances. And so you can imagine on January 1, we might have a bit of a situation where a whole bunch of people thought that the cart was part of the contract and it's taken back. There'll be a, a certain amount of education that'll be necessary but on that. But the other side of this coin is these guys might be getting these trash cans at a much steeper discount than we're paying, and maybe it's something that we could throw into the contract um, as well. Right. Well, that is why I asked for them to, to make a proposal for the purchase and delivery of the carts. Um, uh, I, I thought it would be useful to roll the two things together. Uh, for one thing, what we're telling them is our recycling is automation ready. The entire community, with a few exceptions, has recycle carts for, um, for, the, for the, the single stream recyclables. Um, this may be a more lucrative contract to them if at the same time they're able to sell us carts and that means their trash routes are now automation ready. And so that's why I'm proposing that as an option in this bid. Um, there will be a gap. Even if we get a good a price we like and we decide to exercise that bid, the delivery won't be until February, March, at the earliest of, of 2020. So uh, I, then, I, I don't know if I answered your question because I don't know that I remember it. So my well, apologies. No, sir. that was basically <laughs> it. I just think that a lot of the residents have them. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how many, but if I had to guess, I'd say at least a quarter of the residents have those trash cans <laughs> by Republic. Correct, and, and some, some actually also have recycle carts from Republic because the recycle carts are the 96 gallon and the township offers in the recycle cart, we have a 35 or a 64. And so some people have said, oh, Republic gave me a nice cart, or I don't want the township cart um, because it's too small. Okay, and then the next question I had was regarding the tipping scale. Um, so am I right that the tipping would be they pick up the trash, bring it to the dump, they get weighed, and then that, that is then in turn given to, and, and I guess what I'm getting at is how are we going to be tracking that to make sure that it's our truck and our, I mean, if, if, if they have a commute from here and then they go over to West Brandywine and hit West Brandywine and then they're taking, it's going to get confusing. So, so solid waste, the municipal solid waste, trash, um, uh, Chester County has programmed flows. So depending on where you live, your, your trash can only go to one place. 
and in East Brandywine Township, the programmed right. flow is the Lanchester landfill. Um, the, yes, we, we get, uh, they weigh the trucks, there's the tonnage, we pay it. And, and because we receive those weight slips, we're able to track our total municipal tonnage. The contract anticipates that a hauler may have a contract with us in West Brandywine and want to pick up a couple stops on West Brandywine and wind up with the bulk item they pick up in West Brandywine being on our tipping fee. So the contract anticipates that's a problem and actually includes a fine for so doing. Okay. So that is, that, that is forbidden. <coughs> I, Matt, you gonna follow the trucks around for one day? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I, I've never followed one of our trucks all the way to the landfill, but that is anticipated and forbidden, and there's a fine associated with doing it. Okay, good enough. So at this point, um, this is a, an FYI. Um, it's going to be reviewed by Scott and Tom, <clears throat> and then we'll we'll see a final. Right. One of one of two ways. Either either this is a draft one for you, and a draft two will appear on a future agenda. And at that point, I would ask your permission to advertise it. Or you may make a motion this evening to advertise it, contingent on review by the township solicitor. I don't have a problem uh, as long as we have him looking at it and um, before we send it out for bid. A lot of the information in here that I've looked at so far is boilerplate. Yep, but. The, the beginning is not boilerplate, and that's what we need to focus on mostly. Okay. Yeah. There, there's, there's we could approve it. Yeah, and then they can, they yeah. can yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> All right, um, so now we're gonna turn it over to. Uh, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> which, which, which was the direction? I'm to sorry, Jay, Jay <clears throat> said that we'll just approve it in August, so. Okay, so you would like to see a second draft after review before authorizing advertisement. Yep, sorry. A and, and after, yeah, after the review of Scott and Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, okay, so now we're going to get an update on East Brandywine Township Fire Company Municipal uh, Funding Agreement. Uh, Jason? Uh, Luke and myself met with the members of West Brandywine um, regarding the multi municipal funding agreement for the East Brandywine Fire Company for. 2020 and after much discussion it was determined that um, an agreement is not going to we let the to let it expire July 1st to not have an agreement for next year but to make a resolution um, that's going to be shared I think I believe that's what we kind of agreed at the meeting to bring back to you guys to figure out you know that's okay and they don't want to um, the percentages will be the same as far as the amounts. I'm sorry, not the percentages, the amounts will be the same and along with the increases, but it actually just won't be a contract signed. It'll be more of a resolution is what was the preference to bring back to the board. Uh, and what some of the things were like, for example, uh, if one municipality wanted to give more or donate more to the fire company it would affect their uh, rate within the agreement itself, and it would not allow it. So that was one of the uh, one of the topics of discussion, but more so just they didn't feel that it was uh, agreement was necessary. We we're going to do it. So it wasn't part. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't part of the agreement that it was the three percent increase. Um, that was the whole reason why it was going to be done long term. And that's what it's still going to be long. You can. You can uh, Speaking of but it was the same increases, the same amounts, but just no contract. Right. So the 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 old 2016 funding agreement had a mechanism by which uh, a municipality could provide notice of their intent to withdraw. Uh, last year, during the budget process, they um, uh, West Brandywine Township proposed um, uh, they had a. Um, a letter that stated uh, that this was their intent to withdraw from this. They were extending the deadline that was described in the original 2016 to provide their notice, saying, look, we, 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 we in, we're going to give more time to make a decision on this. And then the funding that the, was decided between the three municipalities was um, written, in, just handwritten in blanks on that letter. Um, it was not a product of the formula that the 2016 
um, uh, for the, the 2016 agreement, um, um, uh, the, the process that it described. There was a second agreement in the spring of this year, our second letter from West Brandywine that said we're going to extend the deadline further to provide our notice that we are going to withdraw. And that's the one that expired either on June 30th or July 1st, yeah, right about then. And so that, that has passed. Uh, West Brandywine has provided their notice to, that they intend to, with, that they have withdrawn from the multi-municipal funding agreement. I think that the, the conversation went from that point to what elements of that old agreement are, are worth preserving in some other form. And, and I think that there is some agreement on um, the mechanism by which the fire company's budget requests are, are handled by a multi-municipal committee so that the fire company needs only make a presentation to one committee instead of, instead of three. Um, and also there was, you know, the, well, there's perhaps a, a, um, an outcome where we have uh, uh, a, a price from each municipality written down and an escalator for each year for a five-year period assigned to that price so that we would have, that everybody could anticipate what their budget is for the, for the next few years. Okay, so, so they've, they've removed themselves from the equation of the agreement, yet I guess you may not be suited to answer this, but it would be the fire department. Are they continuing to make the payments that they were agreeing to make under that agreement? Can I interject a second? So we are just in receipt of their full agreed amount that they agreed to last year. Um, we received that check last week um, for the full amount that was in the, I guess you're calling it multi municipal agreement. Um, since the meetings are at the same time, I haven't attended West Brainwine's meeting, but they had a presentation over there a few months ago that they actually um, put an EMS tax in that has nothing to do with us. They're actually gonna put it, their own ambulance service in West Brandywine Township at their township building. Um, at that meeting, they reaffirmed that they were committing to 120,000 with 3% increases over the next few years. Um, so I don't know how that played into the discussion that you had with them, Luke, but that's how we understood, and we are in receipt of this year's money. Okay, so now we have our own EMS at East Brandywine. We have a QRS at QRS. East Brandywine that probably will not be needed in West Brandywine to the amount that it is because they're going to park this ambulance at West Brandywine Township okay, that's what I was with a 1% 1, 1 tax to West Brandywine residents. To help okay. supplement that. Okay, that was my question because I was curious on, uh, for instance, Freedom Village. Would their EMS handle those calls, majority of them, going forward? I'm, I'm looking out for you guys more so than anybody so, else. So what it looks like is that the QRS itself will not respond to Freedom Village any longer once that ambulance is in service. Um, because some of West Brandywine Township is right up the road, for EMS emergencies, the QRS will be dispatched still to EMS emergencies for proximity will still be the closest unit, but the numbers will drastically decrease for EMS responses since you're not going to be going to Freedom Village. Right. Okay, good. Uh, I wanted to answer what I th think your question was, and I think it's very unfortunate that West Brandywine is doing this because the whole reason for that agreement was to give the fire company some stability and know that it had, had a, a predictable source of funding that they could use for their long range planning. And to go to a resolution means that when the board changes in West Brandywine Township, they can change their position. And so there's no, um, you, you put the fire company back in, in a position where they have to be insecure for from year to year, they have to go back and and determine what, what whether they're gonna get fully funded or not. So, so let me interrupt you real quick. Is there a way that we can bring, uh, um, who is it, West Euclid? Who is it? Uh, Upper Euclid. Or, or, I'm sorry, Upper Euclid. Is there a way that we can bring back the agreement between ourselves and them and West Brandywine can just be a feeder and they, they get what they get. Um, Upper Euclid is such a, a small part of it, and they've been very cooperative over the oh, years. Oh, no, no, I meant just for, for guaranteeing uh, funds. It does, it's, that, 
they're, they're such a small, uh, they make such a small contribution that. Upper Euclid's contribution is, I believe, um, $15,000. And for instance, just last month, we had two calls in Upper Euclid. Um, for the amount of calls we go up there and what we receive from them, it, it, it's a terrific amount. <laughs> it's a terrific amount. So he's right when he says they're just tell us what you want within reason and they pretty much fund it. So there's no real reason. We never, the reason for the agreement had nothing to do with Upper Euclid. It was all about West Brandywine. Where I was going with that is just so that we can show our support to the fire department and say, hey, you know you got it from us, you know you got it for, from Upper Euclid, and uh, you don't have to you know, come to us every year, but you can continue to go to West Brandywine and, and try to work it out with them. That's what I was alluding to, so that there is stability from, from our two townships. Well, I, I, I just would reiterate, at, 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 this, at this moment, there's no agreement of of any type. That, that 2016 um, agreement allowed for a municipality to withdraw by providing notices to the other municipalities by November of the year they're in. And we had two cycles of extensions, one to May and then one to July, and that period is now passed. So the, the, the 2016 multi-municipal agreement no longer exists. I, the conversations we're having now are talking about what kind of successor arrangement can we come to? And, um, uh, you know, I, um, th that 2016 agreement had some features that um, I think everyone would agree was a, was a vast improvement over the, the what was there before nothing at all was there. And among those vast improvements, I'm, perhaps I'm crossing a line into to, to you know my personal opinion here, but I think that the communication was vastly improved. There was there was one presentation on the needs for the fire company to a room that was representative of all three municipalities, and 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 I personally would like to see that arrangement preserved. That's um, what I'm. I think the other significant factor was that we we created a timeline so that it was early on in the budget process, so that. The, the fire company was, wasn't was sitting on pins and needles in December waiting to see what budgets were approved and then find out how much they were gonna get. I don't know if Luke, it, I believe East Brandywine Fire Company and our chief Vince D'Amico just walked in, but um, if I look at what they have committed to us and what they have said, unless Luke has heard otherwise, I would anticipate for 2020, $123,600 committed from them that's the 120 this year plus a three percent increase that's what we're operating under the assumption that we're going to get from them regardless of whether we say that's in a resolution i agree with jay the the the, the comfort zone is not there any longer if they're going to back out of the agreement but if what we've been hearing from them is that they're committed to this three percent increase then it looks like our budget will be 123 600 from them Unless Luke, you, you, you and Jason were at the meeting, what did that seem from you guys? And, and let's not forget that they arrived at that figure, <laughs> not really based upon the formula. Right. It was, it, they arbitrary. They, ar yeah. They just said this is how much we want to spend, and and that it. My recollection is that amount is less than the formula would have required them to contribute. So, we're in, in my opinion, we're back to them not contributing their fair share. But. I guess where I'm going at, and we'll, we'll you know, wrap this up, is by having two townships in an agreement, we're committed to giving, you don't have pins and needles with us. If there's a, if there's a problem and, it, and there's, a, there's a downfall at the West Brady one, then, then at least you already know you're getting your, you know, your percentage increase from us and you're getting your guaranteed yearly stipend amount. Then, the, then you would only have to have those meetings with West Brandy Wine. Well, I, I think the fire company is committed to what Luke said, the joint presentation of our budget. We've always been transparent with that, and we always can try and justify, not try, but we can justify what our budget line is. And, you know, we would look forward to meeting with Upper Euclid, East Brandy Wine, and West Brandy Wine to present that. If our hands are tied that it's only to this amount of money from West, 
I'm not quite sure what more we could do except stomp our feet and say, what am, what am I going to do about it? But we could, we certainly are open to presenting our budget to the multi, you know, every township, just the way Luke, Luke said. I think the answer to your question is that the, the agree, agreement between two parties when there are really three parties in the, in the mix doesn't really accomplish what we had tried to accomplish because you're, they're somewhere near 45% of the, the total contribution. If you don't have them in the agreement, then it doesn't really, it doesn't give them any security to have Upper Euclid and us agree because we've never been the problem. So anyway. Mm. All right. Um, can we, we'll readdress this and again next week, uh, or I'm sorry, um, on the morning session that we're going to, Mary, if you don't mind putting that on there so we'll rehash this, but it'll give us some time to, uh, if you can get your, your, uh, skit together for, for, uh, the, the website. Um, and like I said, the link to the, to yeah. the, to the video will be awesome. Um, and the pricing to the proposal for what you need now. Yeah. The gear proposal right. separate issue than yeah. this budget. Yeah, but I think yeah. that, that we, we can get closure to this by okay. the next meeting. And, and, and I do think while that old agreement has broken down, um, there is uh, still um, a, a good relationship in, in this, and, and I'm sure w Supervisor Winters, um, as the township's representative to that group, um, if we can come to some sort of successor agreement, uh, may present that to the entire board in the near future. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay, um, we're going to move on to uh, the uh, new business for the Estates of Dallin Forge partial dedication of Spine Road, and um, we're going to Giovanna Raffaelli. All right, perfect. For she's the counsel for the Metropolitan Development Group. Hi. Good evening, um, Gio Raffaelli is fine. That's uh, usually what I go by. Um, I'm here on behalf of the developer of the Dallin Forge Estates. We started a dialogue with township staff a couple of weeks ago regarding our request to do a partial dedication of Nichols Mill Road, which is the spine road that goes into the Dallin Forge development. Um, it, the request was initially driven by, um, at our annual meeting and over last winter, um, residents at Dallin Forge were asking for bus service um, during the school year. And because they're private roads and they're not top paved, the school district would not come up into the development. We looked at the development and looked at the amount that we have constructed to date in this one particular area and realized it would probably be a very beneficial that we could go through the process of what we would either a phase dedication or partial by top paving Nichols Mill Road um, up to an area where I, I showed on the, the diagram that I submitted in our materials. Um, and with that, we would also top pave three of the HOA roads, which would be Tucker Drive, Powell Court, and Harner Court. And we would do that so that the school district would have a, a very clear way to make a U-turn around in and out of the development. As part of that as well, we talked with uh, the township engineer and the Chester County Conservation District about converting three of the stormwater management facilities at this time. Those would be seepage, uh, drainage area five, drainage area six, and drainage area H. And the reason for that is that all the houses in those areas that drain to that, primarily all of that construction, if not all of it, is completed. And it would be an appropriate time, once we're doing the top paving, to convert those areas to their final, final form. That's another thing that the township has, uh, not the township, I'm sorry, the residents have brought to our concern in some areas, can we go ahead and finally convert these areas now? Um, they're still in their construction state to some extent. A lot of them are, are pretty well stabilized in areas. Um, the response we got from our engineers and an initial indication um, from the township engineer and the county conservation district that they agreed that it was an appropriate time that if we were doing all this, we could do it at that time. Um, the way we would envision this process going, if it was agreeable to the township, 
would be to initially start and get punch lists from your consultant, township engineer, as we would do with any request for dedication. Um, if we were able to address those punch lists, then we would come through and make a request for dedication. Um, I should step back one minute. What, after the staff meeting, I had reached out to the school district and the township manager was um, also helpful in talking to the school district because residents had contacted him. And at the planning commission meeting that I attended last week, we had just learned that day that the school district did visit the site and they said that they would be in a position to consider bus service um, if the private roads were top paved as well and if there was no parking on the three HOA roads and that the trash cans would be placed on the curb um, and not in the street. Um, at that time I said I would look at our HOA declaration because we're still in control of the declaration and the plan and see if we would have any problems with uh, um, amending rules and regulations or doing that. We do have the ability under the HOA documents to amend the rules and regulations. The HOA documents themselves are silent on parking. Um, they don't permit it nor not permit it. Uh, the plans itself don't have any special um, restriction or non-restriction on parking. We meet the single family parking requirement in the driveway and the garage, so we're not losing any parking spaces as at that. So as a condition of the township, um, considering the partial dedication, we would accept as a condition that we would comply with the requests of the school district and that we would do what was necessary to amend the HOA and uh, meet with the homeowners to talk to them about that before amending it and go through with those, those conditions. What, real quick, what about signs? Would no parking signs be going up even if they were temporary? Because I think you're gonna have a hard time convincing people to keep their cars off the roads, you know, and then. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about, and we, we would, I have a draft of um, amended rules and regulations. We could put parking signs up. It would, what, the way that we envisioned it and the way I started drafting it, drafting it was no parking on the three roads where Scott has the arrows going on those portions. Um, Monday through Monday Friday. Through Friday. Right and we could put it that it could be lifted by the association um, at the time of dedication of the full dedication of Nichols Mill Road. Because I just envision a contractor yeah. coming over to do work, not paying attention, right. parking there, and next and thing you know, the bus turns around and you get stranded children. There. Right, absolutely. I've been, I went to the development tonight before the meeting and once last week, because I wanted to see what the parking was like just so I can get an idea. Um, now this was at 6.30, there was one car parked on, on the street. And it's a good thing to go look at it because it always gives you a better idea. There was one car parked on Tucker Drive. And there was none on Harner. And then Powell Court, the cars were just parked around the cul-de-sac. And their island cul-de-sac. So the bus would never be able to turn those, their landscaped island cul-de-sacs. So I don't think a bus would ever be able to turn around there anyways. So the parking in those two smaller cul-de-sac um, cul bulbs at the end um, did have cars in one of them, not in the other. Um, but yeah, I understand that that would, you know, the enforcement of that. What we talked about at Planning Commission was the HOA does have the ability after we enact the rules and regulations and we post signage to give um, we can impose fines, we can impose towing requirements, we can also give um, permission to the East Brandywine uh, Township Police to enforce, um, I guess, the law, the, the rules and regulations on our private roads, um, as well as the association. That's part yeah. of it. We're running into a problem with that right now, so I don't but know if that's... <laughs> I'm just saying we had that ability. I mean, it's been done before, but um, we understand. I mean, we haven't gone to... We haven't gone to the HOA um, as of yet, other than they asked us to investigate it. I mean, the residents did, and we said we would. And this is, you know, the solution. So it's for a limited time. It's for a limited amount of people. It benefits, you know, that, that good part of that community. So um, given the fact that there is available, I mean, the parking that they have in their garage and their, in their driveway, I think it, it would work during those time frames. And, and you don't have a problem with dedicating roads or, or, or 
top coating these roads with the construction equipment still going up and down there? Well, in this part, you know, we we would have to manage that. I mean, we've done it in other instances, which is which is why we um, supplied an example of a maintenance agreement in another municipality. Um, we've got to manage the builder and their construction traffic. We have to get them on board, and they are initially agreeable to do that. The construction in that par particular area is almost completed. Our site construction for, do you have the overall uh, development, Scott? Just to, I'll just give you an overview, just so you know what the construction is for the, for the whole development. And, uh, and the reason why I'm asking yeah. these questions is, while he's pulling this up, is I know the homeowners have the concern of what's going on, but what the homeowners need to understand is if things are rushed on this and problems arise from construction equipment, uh, damaging the road um, and and these drainage basins, the stormwater basins. Um, once the builder gets his escrow, it's all on the HOA. So they may have been quick to hurry to get the work done, but then if problems arise later on, it's their bill, not the builders. Well, I mean, the top paving of the road, first of all, there's gonna be no construction traffic going in on those three HOA top paved roads. Those houses are all constructed. So for the HOA top paved roads, that's not, that's not really an issue because there's no heavy construction traffic going in there. Um, the township road that's partially dedicated, we're agreeing to extend the maintenance period. So we would be ultimately responsible. So you know, you'll accept dedication you know, right before the school year, let's say hopefully in a perfect world. Um, that maintenance period would keep going. It wouldn't end in 18 months. It would keep going until we have that trigger date in the maintenance agreement that would say, okay, now your 18 months starts. And usually that trigger date is about when the rest of the site, either the rest of Nickel Mo Nickel Nichols Mill Road, or it turns into a different name, I'm sorry, the rest of the Spine Road is dedicated, or at such time as you would accept dedication under your ordinance over 75% complete or something of that nature. So with respect to the stormwater basins, um, I know this just being a developer council for years now, stormwater has changed each each year. It becomes more of an issue, and and a lot of us as developers have gotten much better at notifying HOAs and telling them the stormwater management responsibilities. Partially because our MPDS permits require all these notices. You know, you got to record it at the beginning, you got to record it at the end, you got to record it in the middle with the HOA, and you got to record it every time you transfer a lot. So the management of the HOA basins, um, I think, is eventually getting better by the disclosures and our management company. Um, at the same time though, when a basin is signed off on and converted in this instance, I mean, they are functioning. In all intents for these three areas right now, they seem to be an important from talking to the engineers that they are gonna continue to function, they're draining well, all the houses are completed. So I don't think we're rushing the basin conversions because I'm not asking to convert a basin like the Route 282 basin by lot one at the bottom. We're not asking to convert that at the time. There's still construction going up for houses that drain down there. So that one's not the right time. So we're trying not to rush converting um, stormwater management facilities that aren't ready to be done. Is there any silt going into those basins right now, do you know? In the, in the, the ones, ones we're converting? I can't say 100%. I, I, I can tell you that our engineer from DL Howell, who did the NPDS permit um, amendment, and I know that your engineer has, has looked at it and the county conservation district. So they, they, are on, they agree that it's appropriate to convert. I can't say whether there's any or not. I can just tell you that, that the I can go over and say the houses that are there yep. that are draining to it are, are constructed. Um, but we understand the concerns with construction traffic, but like I said, for those HOA roads, there's no heavy traffic coming through there. Okay. I was just gonna, go ahead. No, 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 I was just gonna say real briefly, the, um, the last part of the site improvements for the, I guess that circle of houses that um, is not, where there's not any houses sold or anything yet, that's, those site improvements should be done, hoping by October, they're underway now so that a lot of the site improvement contract will be done in that area. It will just be the house construction. And then the sewage treatment plan is scheduled to be completed, and a lot of that heavy work is done um, by December. So, and then we figure the build out of 
D.R. Horton, if they continue to build and sell as they are, would probably be in 20, 2020. What I was going to say was Nate Klein, our township engineer, checked with Joseph Franco from the County Conservation District, and Mr. Safranco told me that uh, the two basins that uh, are being considered to be converted are, it's a, it, as she said, appropriate for that to be done. There's work that would need to be done to convert those to remove the silt and sediment that's built up in it now, uh, and then put it at its final uh, elevation. The other basin down near Creek Road right. still. Right. Uh, Matt, do you have any comments about this? Because you're in a better position than any of us do. Um, the only, the only problem I can see right now is uh, winter maintenance. Whether we can possibly get an agreement um, for snow plowing to access that section of roadway through the development. Um, if not, it's it's a pretty good trek from Hopewell Road out to. Uh, Go all the way around yeah. to come up to Probably Creek way, yeah. Road, but you're you're comfortable with the idea of um, the because my understanding is the construction traffic is supposed to be coming in off of Creek Road. Road. I don't think it always does, but because we've had some complaints about that's that. that's what I was I put that in my notes too. I think it it would be hoove you to put up a sign not only saying no parking but no construction vehicles at that entrance. Yeah, I. I am gonna. Uh, I don't know if you can take all construction vehicles. I, I think you're it. gonna limit though. If I if you're if you're a tractor trailer, you get ready to turn in there and you say, "Oh, I gotta go to the other." You know what I mean? Maybe it will stop. I, I don't know if the other entrance is appropriate no. for the, the biggest ones. The settlement agreement requires that once the the spine road, which is Nichols Mill and Seven Springs uh, roads, once those are paved the construction traffic is supposed to come in off of Route 282, not Township if, Road. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a couple thoughts. The advice that we always give is you don't take dedication of the roads until the construction is finished. Obviously, you know Township Road and Hopewell Road, they're, they're just not going to be coming in that way. You're, you're going to have concrete trucks, significant numbers of concrete trucks, you know, trucks loaded with trusses, tractor trailers, and you're going to get significant wear on that wearing course. So the difference, even if they extend the maintenance period, when you get a road today, you're getting a brand new wearing course and you get your 18 month maintenance bond. And, and Matt could speak to this better I don't know what the average life of the wearing course is will be on this road but in this case they're going to put the wearing course on and then it's going to be subjected to significant traffic from heavy vehicles so you're getting even if they extend the maintenance bond and I don't know how long they would intend to extend it it's not likely that that wearing course is going to fail even during a 36 month maintenance period but you're receiving what I would view as an inferior product because it's been subjected to heavy truck traffic. So that's something that you Early should, in its life. Right. right. That's something so you should instead, keep in instead mind. Instead of being and a 20 year. And what I would ask, and I would, I would ask, and I think I put this in an email, see, I mean, right now, everyone's driving on the binder course. All the people that live there drive on the binder course. It's typical to drive on the binder course. I would suggest you go to Kraft and the school district and say, is there some reason why the buses can't drive on the binder course? Because that would make more sense to me. I don't know, the school district does have sort of arbitrary policies on this from my experience, but I think you need to think about that issue, that you're going to end up getting a wearing course, a final product road that has wear on it that you normally would not get. And I think it's probably unrealistic to think that that truck traffic, and I don't know, I think you're gonna get a lot of people complaining and live on Township Road if you, if you 
send them down that way. I oh, we can't. Even, no, I don't. I don't my, think they my, can even do it. No, I, my concern was that they absolutely shouldn't be coming in on Township right. Road. Right. They do. Right. On some so occasions. They're but going to continue to come in Creek Road. They're going to pull up that hill. That's another thing. The heavy truck traffic's heading up that hill on that wearing course, and it's going to take wear well, that it wouldn't, you wouldn't ordinarily have. And I, I don't disagree. It's going to be, yes, you're going to get it, well, you're getting it the same amount of time. But I don't know from a, from a top paving standpoint. I mean, the binder's been in. It actually looks really good, it, I, you know, from what I can tell driving on it and looking at it. But the, the, the top coat, I mean, usually lasts, and then you can ask your roadmaster. I mean, it's, it's not that it's going to last, you know, for five years, and, you, you know, we've used two of them up with, with some construction traffic. Um, we're probably talking by the time, I mean, the, the site construction for the heavy step will be done this year, and the, it's going to be the house construction that's going to lag behind, um, which will be about another year. And all the roads are going to be dedicated to the township? So no. No, no just, just the, the spine, spine road. That's what I thought. Okay. Yep, it, just it the confused spine me road. when we stood there. Go ahead, Chief. Mm -hmm. no, just... Can you address what... Um, um, Tom said about the uh, the school district. Is, is the school district just dug its heels in and said, "No way, are we going to send a, a school bus up?" You there? know, I haven't. Other than their response, the first time they responded with this was last week, right before the, I came to the planning commission. And actually, they responded to Scott, not me. <laughs> but um, they did go out and look. So I haven't gone back to them since what they they said what their conditions would be I was trying to work it out their conditions was one of their conditions that it be a final coat on the roads or was it that was always the precursor to any school district I've ever I've ever they dealt did. with Apple Cross they, Apple Cross just paved their roads right recently and they they the school board or school district was running buses up and right. down there so I, I I would have to assume if there was enough discussion with them that they would they would and then the other thing, I'm sorry that I neglected to mention, is that you need to think about the conflict between the school buses, the kids, and all the construction vehicles. I mean, I don't, I don't know that there's a lot of construction vehicles going in and out of there during school bus time, but that's a consideration. But that may be more dangerous for the kids to be walking down the creek. I, yeah, but you're already dealing with that at the bottom, at the bottom of the hill with people tra parking on the spine road and stuff like that. I mean, again, we're coming to a portion of the development where there won't be any construction traffic. Yes, they're going to have to travel on the spine road, but you're not going to be having construction vehicles in the area where we're asking for dedication. It's going to be a way where the school buses aren't going to be going. I understand. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we do have to reach out to, to the craft bus company and, and try to, I mean, it's already, they've set precedence by doing it in Apple Cross. I can't see why they can say no for, for a new development, especially uh, when the dedication is going to be partially uh, taxpayers' money as well for, for the spine road uh, for maintenance on, on heavy equipment. So um, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, I would ask you also to consider that we haven't talked about what the life of the wearing course, you know, what the top coat is going to be. So, I mean, if there's some way, if you feel as though you're getting, you know, a year's less, I mean, which is what we're really talking about, a year's less of, of wear on that portion of the road, I mean, those things can usually be discussed or negotiated in some form of our maintenance and dedication agreement. I mean, we, we still are going to have this maintenance period. So if something happens to the road or you guys say, you know, there's so much wear on here, we need X, Y, and Z, you're going to have that ability in the agreement. I think it's going to be very hard to quantify what that wear is. But I, I agree with uh, Supervisor Scribner that the, I think the first choice is to go back to the school district and say, why all of a sudden try try to get them to agree to come up there on the wear course and then I think we should communicate with them right well that's fine all right so I'm just to say if we're going to do that we're not going to end up converting the basins because that's all something that we would mobilize at the same time it yeah. just makes the it just they go together it just makes sense right okay um all right so I guess that will be our our uh 
homework contact assignment? Contact Carl Croft okay. tomorrow. And then, gee, I'll be in touch with you what I, That's fine. What I hear from. We'll see what they come and we'll go from there. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, do I have any public comments on agenda items from tonight? Uh, Chief, you said that you've already hit your, um, your your goal, or actually the quantity of, <laughs> <laughs> I revise that. You've already hit your amount the of total arrest numbers for last year less than seven months. In your opinion, why do you think that is? Why do I think that is? Um, it's, it has to do with a lot of our train being traveled. We've had a lot more drug arrests this year. So um, we've sent a number of officers to specialized training in drug interdiction and um, instead of them making use of that training um, we're just we're busier in call volumes and whatnot so it's, it's a combination of a lot of things so what can the township do for you just keep supporting the police department and if I s we need additional man I mean the, the one need that we have right now is we uh, we're most likely going to need another detective because our detective is just overwhelmed right now so budget for this year, or for um, next year? it's not part of this year um, that's something we're going to discuss uh, you know in the budget preps for next year okay Joe um, what is the total budget for the for the fire fire department for East Brandywine Township for the year off the top of your head just a rough number million million two no I believe in Chief, I don't know if you can help me with this. I think last year's budget was about four hundred ninety thousand, four between four fifty and five hundred. I believe that's now that is literally off the top of my head. And is that the money? Is that the, is that all the money that the the township gives you, or is that through fundraising and so on? on it's your part? it's that comes from a combination of the three townships' contribution, as well as our mailer, which is about a fifteen to twenty percent return rate um, on fundraising itself. Would you find it more proactive if the township funded the, the fire department 100%? I would love that. Gentlemen, <laughs> is there a way that we can fund our, our fire department 100% so we get rid of the time and energy we're trying to spend now to try to collect money from other townships? And if we need to, we can always bill them at a later date for the service that we need. I, as a resident, don't care who comes to put out the fire. I just want someone to put out the fire. I'm sure everybody Wait, Would you, as a sick. resident, care if you were paying for the fire company to go to West Brandywine Township and put out fires? Now, that's not what I'm saying, Jay. Well, that's what's exactly could... what you're saying. If we 100% fund the fire and we don't get a contribution from West Brandywine Township, 45% of the calls last year were in West Brandywine Township. West Brandywine Township should be paying 45% or, or some, we, we arrived at a formula that wasn't based just on calls, but they have to be pay, they have to pay their fair share of supporting the fire company. Correct, and that's why the statement I made, maybe we need to uh, charge them for each trip that we make, above and beyond the fact that if we do fund our fire company 100%, we don't then have to worry about if we're gonna get the money or not. So, but I do, yes, they should pay. Everybody, if you're gonna use our services, they should pay, but we need to make it a little bit more simpler for our fire company to do what it needs to do and not have to worry about pulling its hair out to try to have to fund itself. And that's, that's why that's we spent a cons that. considerable amount of time coming up with an inter-municipality agreement and came up with a formula. They had input into it and to, to achieve that goal. Okay. But again, he backed above, away from it. Above and beyond that, if he, they don't have to do any additional fundraising, like they don't have to do their barbecue or they don't have to put out their mailer, is a way that we can limit the time that they have to spend to do that by funding them with whatever we need to fund them. Their job is to put out fires. Their job is not to collect money or to find money or funding for that come for their company. We need a fire company that is responsive and has the equipment that it needs that is up to date so they can do their job. Just like you guys need the technology and the equipment that you need to do your job. Same thing with the police department. We fund them, we should find a way to fund them also. Um, were, and, and I'm curious, I didn't understand. Were, were you um, saying East Brandywine Fire Department is East Brandywine's only fire department and that we, 
we're 100% East Brandywine, or are you saying you continue to go to West Brandywine? No, continue. Continue and do what you want to do with the municipalities, but let's find a way that we don't have to always rely on whether or not East West Brandywine is going to give us the money that we need. We know that eventually they will, and they will get an increase when we have to yearly, but is there a way that we can minimize the amount of extra work the fire company has to do to raise the additional funds that it needs to operate? Plain and simple. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for uh, agenda items discussion? Yes, please. Uh, only, only reason why, Bruce, is what? because Luke, Luke gets cranky if he can't see you on the video. Okay, and, I'll get out and my and sign. <laughs> this, this question goes to, to Matt. Uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple meetings ago, we were talking about the uh, Echo Dell and the trees that needed to be removed along there. Have we made any progress with that? Uh, no, that's going to be a fall project. Um, we're extremely busy with everything we have going right so now. So is the township going to take care of it, or do we have to go to e for each resident to ask for help with the tree removal? It's the green ash that's dying from the, the, the ash borer. Uh, the um, direction from the board was that uh, we would go to each individual property owner and request 50% of the cost for the tree removal. Okay. Um, it is a... It is a an insect that's spreading throughout the township, killing all the uh, all the ashes, and it would be good to remove it as soon as possible. Yeah, and I think we were talking about um, some of the trees were 100% gone. Some of them were were so partially you, gone. But yeah. here's the next question. I don't know the answer to this. If you take away the habitat that the that the um, elm beetles are eat, you know, the trees that they're eating. Are they going to go get other ones? Right. Sure. And so, but the, these are all lined along the street. And right. They're becoming a hazard. I don't know which ones are on properties, which ones aren't. You had to do a who's going to pay for the survey then? Well, and they were. That was what it was. It was the trees were directly on the property, on the property line. line. Yeah. So, the, the, that, that's so why nothing's I, really happened at this point. Right. This right. The way we left it was we would we would definitely take ownership, but then we couldn't take 100% ownership, being right. that they weren't 100% on the township well, property. Right now, nothing has happened in the sense of correct. Homeowners not contacted yet or anything. Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, no, they haven't. Okay, that was just. Thank you. The sooner you can get rid of them, the better. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, um, just a reminder: the board did meet in executive session um, at the last meeting um, for personnel and legal matters, and the board, uh, I believe, will be meeting this evening for personnel uh, for legal matters. Um, uh, do I have a notice to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.